Okay, let's start. Quiz six, question one. Okay, there's a cash advance of $2,090 and to be paid off in the next four years by payments of 296.78 made semi-annually at the beginning of each payment period. What nominal interest rate compounded semi-annually is Jacob being charged? Okay, so this is at the beginning. So let's start here, we choose begin. All right, so payments are made semi-annually. Okay, that's what we have there. So semi-annually, so that number would be two. And the compounding is done semi-annually also. So that will also be two. All right, and we'll use the calculator. IY is what we would, what we need to compute. And the present value is 2,090. So that amount of money is in our possession. All right, payments have to be made of 296.78. So 296.78. Okay, and the future value should be zero. We intend to pay off this cash advance of $2,090. All right, so let's start. So second IY, we have two in there, but you can still go and enter it for PY and that value will automatically be recorded for CY. Okay, now we get out of there. And at the beginning, we should have started. The calculator seems to be, it is in begin mode, but if it wasn't, we go second PMT and you see begin. Now, if it were in end, second enter would get it to end. That's how we move from end to begin, begin to end. But if it's now in end, we hit second, enter and that will put it into begin mode okay we exit there by second cpt all right so next is how much four years it will be paid off all right so four second and n so n the value for n is eight all right CPT, we're to calculate the present value is 2090. So let's put that in 2090. That's the present value. The payment is, it should be negative 29678. So 296.78, and it's negative, and that's the payment. Okay, zero for the future value. We compute today. Interest 7.64 if it's rounded. Okay, 7.64. If you round the number, it should be that should be the correct answer. And it seemingly is the correct answer. Now, what if we had put in 393772? Would that be marked correct? And it will also be marked correct. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Question number two. Okay, Colin is leasing a car originally valued at 43720 The lease is being financed with an interest rate of 6.7 compounded monthly with payments of $670 at the beginning of each month. Okay, how many payments will Colin have to make to repay the original value of the car. All right, the payments are made at the beginning, so we'll choose begin here. How are the payments being made? Well, the payments are being made at the beginning of each month. So it's monthly, so we put 12 in there. All right, the compounding, it's compounded monthly also so that will also be 12 right we pass over n we will do the calculation that is what we will have to find the number of payments so that is what we need to compute and it says two decimal places okay the interest rate is this number right up here 6.7 there we go, 6.7. The present value is 43720. Okay, 43720. 
and the payments are $670, okay? Each payment is $670. We put it in as negative because it's a payment. And the future value would be zero. Hopefully we'll pay off for this, for the car. All right, so let's start. Second IY, the number is 12. And PY is 12, CY is 12. Now, please note that it is, the calculator is already in the begin mode, so I don't need to put it into the begin mode. All right, how many payments? So we are computing N. The interest is 6.7, so 6.7 IY. 43720 is for the car. 43720 is the present value. Okay, payments 670, so 670 plus minus payment and zero for a future value. And then we compute N and N turns out to be 80.8. .8. All right, so the number in here is 80.8. .8. All right, it's wrong with the two decimal places. But the number of payments, we cannot have a part of a payment. So once it goes over, then the answer will be 81. The number of payments will indeed be 81. All right, because a partial payment, uh, it, the point eight means the partial, not the full $670. So you do make another payment. So the answer would be 81 payments, not 80. Okay, next question. Let's see. There's converting an RRSP balance of 575,000 to an RIF. Okay, DeAndre wants to receive 3,665 at the beginning of each month for 22 years. What nominal annual interest rate compounded semi-annually is required? Round the answer to two decimal places. So it's made at the beginning, so we choose begin. All right, we choose begin there. Okay, and uh, what do we have? Well, <clears throat> We can go to present value. Present value is 575,000. So we can put it in there, 575,000. All right, you want to receive payments of 3665. Okay, 3665. Now we are receiving these payments, but this is really not in our possession. So we can put that present value as negative. All right, eventually after 22 years, the amount will be zero, yes. Everything would be done. All right, they want to receive this amount of money at the beginning of each month for 22 years. So PY, those are the payments, the payments are being received. And the compounding, the interest rate is compounded semi-annually. What interest rate compounding semi-annually is required? All right, so we can, this is what we need to compute is the interest rate. And then we will use the calculator to get it. All right, so we're already in the begin mode, so we can go ahead. Like I showed you before, if you're not, then you go second PMT. And if it were in end, then you can switch to begin by clicking on second enter and then that that mode only has two choices end or begin and it does not display but begin does as you see if you switch to end you do not see a display up in the top right corner but when you switch to begin it does show up okay let's exit there all right second iy py is this number right here 12 so 12 and we enter it in this case, CY is 2. Okay, so 2, enter. And PY is 12, CY is 2. So we get out of there. And how long will this go on for? 22 years. Okay, so we go 22, and we go second, N, N. And N turns out to be 264. All right. We're computing IY, so we pass over that. 
Now we go to the present value, five, seven, five, zero, 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 plus minus present value. Okay, the payments are being received, three, six, six, five, three, six, six, five, that's a payment. And then eventually the amount will come to zero. So we would like to compute the interest rate. So it's 5.32. That would be the answer. Let's round it to two decimal places. Round the interest rate to two decimal places. So 5.32 should be correct. And it is correct. Okay, that's question number three. All right, question number four. We have an amount is paid at the end of every month into an account. The nominal interest rate is 2.98 compounded semi-annually. How long in years and months will it take for payments to accumulate to an amount of, for the payments to accumulate to an amount of $17,451.38? All right, so $478 is paid at the end of every month, okay? Every month. So it means that PY is 12. Okay, the nominal rate is 2.98 compounded semi-annually, so this number would be 2. And we use our calculator to do that. IY is this number right here, 2.98, 2.98. Payment, take for payments to accumulate to an amount of 17 Okay, the payment is 478 is paid at the end of every month. All right, so we're paying, so it would be negative 478, right? Present value would be zero, yes. We haven't anything started with anything. The future value is 17451.38. And these numbers are what we're calculating here, <clears throat> years and months. In fact, so how long will it take in years and months for the payments to accumulate to that much? All right, so we'll find a value for N and then we'll have to convert it to years and months. Okay, so where do we start? Well, we start with second IY, PY is 12 and CY is two. So 12 for PY, oops, sorry, one, two, PY. And for CY, it's 2, enter. Okay, so PY is 12, CY is 2, and then we're out of there. Okay, so we're trying to get N, so we'll pass over N. The interest is 2.98, so 2.98 is IY. Uh, present value is 0, so we put in 0 for the present value. Payments are... 478, 478, we're paying it, so it's negative, and we put it in there. All right, future value is 17451.38, 17451.38, that's the future value. So now we go and we compute N, all right? So N is 34.94, as many as wish you carry. Maybe you should carry as much as you can. 34.9174382. All right, so we do not round it. We leave it at that. Now, how do we com convert it to years and months? Now, how long will it take for the payments, okay, to accumulate? So the number we have to divide and by is the number of payments per year, which is 12. So we proceed and divide that n by 12, and we get the number of years. So 2.9097865. So it's two years, two whole years. So we have to convert the decimal portion into months, decimal portion of a year, 0 0.9097865. So to do that, we subtract two, and we get 0.909765. To convert it to months, we have to take this and multiply by 12, and that would give us 
10.917432, but it's over 10. So this has to be 11 months, right? In years and months, you have to round the month up, okay? Because it's every month. You cannot have a part of a month in there. So we submit it and the answer is correct, but N has a problem. What could be the problem? Well, the problem is because we're still in the begin mode, all right? So what we should do is go second there, begin, and then we get out of begin, and we come out of there, and we can now compute N. And now if we compute N, we should get a different result. Now, as you can see, all right, it's a good demonstration. But it's really 35, and let's submit the question. So it so happened that the 35, it didn't change the years and months, because if we take that and divide by 12, what do we get? We get 2.9166669. If we subtract the 2, we get 0.9166669. If we multiply that by 12, we end up with 11 exactly. So the answer is still correct. Okay, so we will stop here.